my name is Adora Svitok. I'm a 10-year-old published author. I'm the author of Flying Fingers, Master the Tools of Learning Through the Joy of Writing. And today I'm going to be talking a little bit about some of the tips and tricks I use when I teach students through distance learning and also through school visits. I do actually do quite a bit of teaching. Every day I use the video conferencing unit to talk to kids in schools around the world from Costa Rica to Dubai. And it's not just kids, but also teachers that I've been teaching, as a matter of fact. So here are my, um, without for any further ado, let's get started. First of all, I know that kids are sometimes a little tentative about doing activities on their own. Um, for instance, if you tell them, well, write a descriptive paragraph about a castle, they might be a little wary at first because maybe they aren't so great descriptive writing or they want a little more practice. And I know that uh, many kids, myself included, might have that sort of lack of confidence in the beginning. That's why I like to do write-along activities with the students. And um, not only do write-along activities give them an example, but it also gives them the feeling of having contributed something to a piece of writing. Another thing that I do uh, when I'm doing that is that I write along with them. I ask them questions. I might contribute something on my own. That way they see their teacher um, writing something and they feel, well, the teacher, the person who's teaching us is doing this. It can't kill us. So when they see their teacher doing an activity, it makes them feel like maybe it's not so hard after all or maybe it won't kill us. <laughs> It'll definitely give them a little more confidence that the activity is actually fun and interesting. Now, another thing that you might cringe at, but kids love gross stuff. Trust me on this one, myself included. I love gross stuff. I recently spotted a giant worm, or sorry, slug, and I was observing it a little bit. I also relocated, relocated some earthworms. I like observing insects, and I also like reading about all kinds of gross happenings. Um, and kids, I think in general, like gross stuff, like making messes. And while I'm not suggesting that you let them open cans of paint and throw spitballs around in your classroom, I am suggesting that you might want to incorporate some gross, offbeat, or interesting elements in your lessons to get kids more excited. Take giant killer aliens as an example. One time I was teaching kids persuasive writing. You might think persuasive writing, well, that's an awful lot. Uh, something that kids are a little anxious or not anxious but they don't really want to be interested in persuasive writing well i get them interested in persuasive writing by talking about giant killer aliens so i say well giant killer aliens are going to inhalate the earth you have to write a persuasive letter in order to save the earth from giant killer aliens giant killer aliens like chocolate soccer etc so how are you going to persuade the giant killer aliens blah blah so i incorporate gross interesting offbeat elements into my lessons I think kids um, can gain confidence and also gain interest in lessons through those tips. Now, what happens if you have little difficulties in your classroom, especially with distance learning? Sometimes some technological things might not work out. For instance, I press presentation once, and the other side happened to be in Alberta, Canada. So they didn't see the presentation. They only saw me and the whiteboard behind me. Now, technically, it wasn't really a whiteboard. It was... Um, an interwrite board, which I used to project stuff on. But I decided, since I had some markers by me, I could write on the board, and they would be able to see the important points that I wrote about on the board. And it worked. Thanks to some quick innovation on the part of um, my own thinking and also some of my mom's suggestions, then I was able to um, make sure that, that video conference went on smoothly. Also, sometimes sound might not work or I might not be able to see the other end. Well, take heart. Sometimes it helps to just have your other end disconnect, reconnect. So whatever it is, don't give up trying unless you think that you should really just connect it another time. And I'm sure you'll have good judgment on that point. Some of my writing and teaching programs, and I've introduced some new ones, include persuasive writing, no more groaning and moaning, how to ace your state writing assessments, and go beyond that as well. Because I know that state standards are a very important thing in lots of schools, then I've made these presentations to help kids pass their state tests. Um, also, I have descriptive writing, writing dynamics, writing inspirations, really everything about writing, as well as the six traits of writing, inf informative writing, research papers, 
we have a giant, giant variety of different writing lessons and also social studies lessons, helping kids learn social studies through fun, interactive writing activities. And um, also, I love putting clip art into my PowerPoints using technology, and I think that's another thing that gets kids really interested. So technology, interesting offbeat stuff, joining in with the lessons. Do some of the activities yourself and show them that no, this activity will not kill you. It is actually interesting and safe. And make them feel confident by doing, um, by doing some group activities so that they feel like they've contributed something, but at the same time, they've got an example. And last but not least, when you're teaching and you're using technology, don't feel like uh, the technology is not going to work. Don't, don't lose heart. Sometimes technology can be a little uh, turncoat on us, but I'm sure it'll all work out in the end. Have fun teaching. See you.